We're good? Yep. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Alexander Persson, and I'm the uh, representative for the coordinators of Masters in Medicine here at Urubu University. Uh, with me here today, I have... I'm Hanel. I'm from South Africa, and I'm a student currently in my final year in one of the courses from the Biomedicine um, Group. I'm studying Nutritional Molecular Medicine. Excellent. So we're going to take you guys through this presentation where we're going to uh, some of the features of the program here, something about Sweden, a little bit about the university. And uh, yeah, let's let's get started. So this that was us. Oh, this is very fast. So this was us. And so uh, just some short information before we start, and that is at the end, we can take uh, time for questions. We have had some questions sent in. You guys can use the chat function to send in questions and we'll ask them or we'll answer them as best we can. And then uh, there's, there's a web, this webinar is being recorded, so you can check it out online uh, afterwards and send it to all your friends, of course. So the agenda, really briefly, we're going to go through why to study this master one of these master's programs I'm going to go through the program a little bit more in detail uh, talk about what's going to happen or what could happen after you actually finish these uh, masters we're going to hear from hanel what she thinks about being a student here and then we're going to go through some of the formalities the entry requirements the fees how you actually do apply after you've been uh, you selected or you choose to come here and then there's some information about a general webinar about how to study in Sweden and at this university uh, we're gonna give you information about when that webinar will take place uh, we're gonna finish off with why you want to study at our university and then provide you guys with some uh, useful links and then it's uh, question time okay so our master's programs, they are actually embedded in very successful research environments we have here at uh, our department. So we have three different programs with different focus, and they are all coming from and being taught by the uh, research environments. So that being said, there's a bit of a special focus on the specific research area. Um, that being said, it's not totally um, directed towards research. We will give you a good research overview and also train the research, the young research mind. But of course, as we will do at uh, look at the, in the end, there are different opportunities after this master's program. You will get really well equipped for other uh, other opportunities outside of the specific academic research environments. Uh, the, the training is very transdisciplinary. And uh, uh, in the beginning of the programs, some of the courses are given jointly. So there's actually students from three different disciplines working together. And you, Anel, what uh, program are you at? I'm at the Nutritional Molecular Medicine and Bioinformatics program. Um, so you have sort of specific courses in that group and then also courses with all the other programs, um, cardiovascular medicine and innate mm -hmm. immunity, um, which sort of gives you a, a nice interaction between all the different students in, in the different programs, which is really enlightening and learns a lot from them, from each other as well as from the lecturers. So you thought it was good to like uh, yeah, read think, together with other... Yeah, absolutely. I think you, you see a lot of students from different backgrounds in mm -hmm. this way and you also um, learn from students in a different sort of with a different mind direction as you and that you can learn from people that knew things you don't know and mm -hmm. then teach them things that you've learned in your in your background and in your specific courses that they don't necessarily touch on yeah so it's really great so we have a very dynamic student group that works together both within the programs and also across the programs yeah. and that's something we really want to uh push and that's something that we think is one of a real good strength of this of these uh programs and that being said, it's, it's student-centered teaching. And for you that are not familiar with that, it's, uh, it gives quite a bit of responsibility on the students to, to find and acknowledge their 
what they need to read and the knowledge gaps they may or may not have. Uh, we do that in, in a formalized way. We have tutorial groups that are scheduled where students sit together and discuss a topic that they have read up, up, uh, read up upon. But it's also uh, student-centered in a way that, for instance, the wet labs we do, like we, we uh, see in this image here, the students actually always come prepared to the labs. They're given the task beforehand to kind of prepare and design their own experimental setup. And did you have experience with student-centered teaching before? Not in this sense. No? No. A little bit, but it was more sort of given instructions and then expected to follow them. We weren't really exposed okay. to very much. Um, doing your own, not doing your own thing, but coming in and preparing your own labs. And that was quite nice to do from our perspective, not just given a project what us to so How did you find it to have that responsibility as a student? Well, it was a bit challenging the first yeah. few times, of course, but it was actually really great when you get into it and you feel much more empowered in doing your own thing um, as you do this and you go through it. You sort of walk out and say, oh, I can actually do this. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. it's a really great way to learn as well. You sort of make your own mistakes and you learn from them and you move forward. So that's good. Exactly. <laughs> that, that's also, even even if it is a master's education, we, we do have this research. We kind of train the research mind in a way. And what Hanal just described is one of these things that you actually take responsibility and you learn from your mistakes. And there is, there is room to yeah, do that room. within the exactly. course. So it's great. Nice. So if we look a little bit about how the programs are, uh, are laid out, when we look at the first year, the first semester of the first year, there are three courses going. Um, the research process and the advanced cell and molecular biology courses are courses that are taking, are taking uh, the three uh, different programs together at the same time. And then there's a specific methodology course that is uh, specific for the different programs because all of these different disciplines, even if they're all in medicine, we have different methodology, practical things that are specific for the uh, different uh, uh, focus areas. And then uh, when we come in uh, at the spring, the spring semester, the second semester, the first year, we have a joint course again, human genomic and bioinformatics. And then we wrap that uh, semester up with a specific half of the semester. It's program specific. And there you really get into your you know, program. So that's, uh, that's an advanced course. It's heavy on theory, heavy on lab. And you really get to integrate yourself with the research environment and the researchers actually. Yeah. And then when we come into the second year, uh, the second year, since this is a master's program, we have a 45 degree, 45 point degree project. And to prepare the students for that, initially in the, in the first semester, second year in the fall, we, uh, we want the students to take this course called research overview and design, where you, you kind of start to work with your research questions for your degree project, right? Yes. Yes, so you sort of start um, getting an idea of what degree project you want to do and then through this first course they sort of take you through how to write a protocol and how to do a poster design, how to do a research design to sort of prepare you to, to do this project in the end. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you're now... Uh, we just finished that course and now just the degree project ahead, so all of the base work is done, which is really good. It keeps you from procrastinating too much as well. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, so it, it really sets a base for your project that you take on then from mm -hmm. the next, from January on. Yeah, so now you're really deep in your degree yeah, project work. Exactly, yeah, and go ahead with that. With that. Nice, yeah. so that was, that was the outline. And then what happens after you, uh, you graduate, of course, there is, there are research opportunities you will become very well equipped to become a researcher, both in academia, but also in the industry. There are opportunities for pharmaceutical industries. There are healthcare stakeholders, uh, different companies. And even if you are research trained, it doesn't mean that you need to only work with research because the being research trained kind of open your minds to a more 
you identify problems and how to solve them and you work it's a different way of thinking a little bit and a different yeah. way to uh, to approach tasks So uh, I thought I'll just talk a little bit about why I personally chose this program and how I found studying here and, and also living in Sweden a bit in general. Um, so one of the biggest drawing points for me for this program was its its focus on research. And I felt that that coupled with the general um, high quality of, of science and innovation within Sweden um, would open a lot of opportunities for me later on. Um, and I also really liked, um, as Alex explained earlier, the the um, the specific uh, directions of the of these courses that you a lot of other programs sort of give you a more broad overview view, but I really like that this sort of aims to answer more directly certain questions that I found intriguing, um, and so I really like that about this course. Um, when I got here and started with the program, two things that really stood out for me and that I thought I should mention is um, firstly a very close contact between the lecturers, the researchers, and the students within the different programs. Um, it's not something I was initially used to. But I really quickly became to appreciate how this really stimulates learning, as well as a couple with the independent learning um, mm -hmm. that you also talked about, how this really creates a very good learning environment and, and studying and learning by yourself um, with the help of all these people around you and the close contacts. You can walk to anybody, any researcher in any field and, and talk to them and ask them questions about how it works, what they're doing. Um, it really sparks interest and it really helps you see um, how, this is go yeah, how this is going and, mm -hmm. and what you can do. So that was really great. Um, and then living in Sweden, which is this one. Um, so because I sort of chose the course and not the country, I was very sort of intrigued to see what Sweden would offer, apart from snow, which I was really excited <laughs> to see, of course, <laughs> coming from South Africa. That's not something you, you know, mm -hmm. and it didn't disappoint. Um, living in Sweden uh, and in the Europe in general, it sort of provides you a lot of tra travel opportunities, and the inner explorer in me is, is really excited about that, to sort of be able to do a weekend trip to the north or to the south of Sweden or go to another country and, and see different things. Um, and you also learn a lot in that way. Um, one of the nicest things about Sweden for me is the absolute beautiful scenery and linking with that is that it's always literally a stone throw away. We have a mm -hmm. forest just behind the university where I can go jog in and on that side we have this huge amazing lake that you can go you know, skiing on in the winter or canoeing in the summer and like I said, the activities as well that's written there. It's, there's so many things to do. You can go horseback riding, even just in Örebro, you don't have to go anywhere. You can go skiing and, and swimming and just cycling and, and it's amazing. Um, and overall, just as an international student, you have so many contact with students in our program, but even in the different international master's mm -hmm. programs, um, you learn to know so many new people and you learn from them. And it's just, this all just sort of comes into this experience package and it's, it's just amazing to to be able to to be here and do that and I'm enjoying it a nice. lot yeah <laughs> I'm born in Sweden I've been away for a while but I I actually also quite enjoyed fishing yeah. and hunting opportunities <laughs> if you're into yeah. that are also pretty good so let's let's go into some of the formalities so the entry requirements and tuition fees so there are uh, special entry requirements you are required to have a bachelor's degree or more 90 or more credits in biomedicine, biomedical laboratory science, biology, medicine, and or something uh, in that area. There are quite strict English requirements. So it's uh, it's English course six or English B from from uh, upper secondary school in Sweden, but also any or a few of the international English tests are valid and you will find them online on on admissions which ones apply to you uh, sweden does have tuition fees for for students that are from outside the eu like you for yeah. instance hannah uh, the first installment is you can see it's seventy-two thousand swedish uh, approximately and the total fee for the two years the whole master's program is 288 uh, yeah, and then for country-specific information, you you have a link here below the below the image because there are some some conditions that apply to different countries. So please be very diligent in in looking into the details concerning you. So then then how how do you actually apply when you uh, when you read up on the programs and the contents and you 
you decided that you want to come here to us, uh, you go online to universityadmissions.se and then you find your program and you, you apply. Please make sure that you select priority. There is a priority list, one, two, three, four, because when you get admitted to your highest priority, the lower priorities, they will vanish from the system. So if you are set on one of the programs, please select the, uh, the highest priority for that. And for deadlines, we're coming up on it. It's actually mid-January, so there's another month or so. And there is a small application fee, again, for non-EU citizens of 900 Swedish for, for all the bureaucracy to be, uh, to be working properly, because we have external evaluators that we need to bring in on this. And on the 14th of December, there will be a general webinar uh, containing uh, topics such as housing, how you, uh, how you get that, scholarship opportunities, the student life in general, our university and the city and, and Sweden. And there's a link at the bottom of this slide here where you register for this webinar and they will go through all of these details concerning life outside of the immediate studies and, and research. So there are a few uh, we have here listed a few um, few reasons why you should study at Örebro University. We are a highly ranked university. We are ranked number 62 on the list of young universities worldwide. So we have an excellent quality in, in uh, education and research and these evaluator have these evaluators have acknowledged that, which is really, really fun. There's a close contact with researchers, as Hanel said. It is. It's really great to, to be able to just discuss their work and, and get ideas and just get input from people actually working in this and, and provide inspiration and, and learn from and, and always somebody to help. So it's, it's amazing too. It's a really good learning environment. To, to be able yeah, to, to yeah that, that's an atmosphere and kind of a philosophy that we try to adhere to because if we as teachers, professors, researchers have the door open and the students can approach in a, in a non-formal way, yeah. we think that it's, it's beneficial instead of having really set hierarchies. Yeah. So it's, um, we, we learn a lot from the students too because we we're never good enough to learn so we uh, we actually as as faculty we appreciate the the close contact mm -hmm. with the students uh, you will get help finding accommodation there's actually you you did that didn't yeah, you yeah yeah you uh, it's very easy they help you a lot uh, through the university i'm sure it'll be on the general webinar but it's one form and they they're with you there all the steps and always if you have questions you can email them so i have no problem with the yeah. accommodation at all so yeah, that, that's that, very easy to do. So that's pretty pretty nice yeah. because <laughs> coming from from abroad, it's yeah. difficult. New country, yeah. new city, new university. At least the accommodation will be taken care of. At least you have of. a bed to sleep. At <laughs> least you have a bed to sleep in. That's great. And then uh, the international office has a pretty good introduction yeah. system, both to the university, Sweden, uh, in general, customs. Mm -hmm. Did you learn anything on that? Yeah, you ate was... some herring, I assume? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we did. Um, yeah, they take you through Eurobrew and uh, sort of a little bit of the history of the city. Um, it's also great to meet uh, students in other programs. So it's not just the biomedicine students, but journalism students and everyone. And they sort of take you through everything that is Sweden, how it works. Um, yeah. Just yeah. How generally. And there are some festivities as well. I yeah. <laughs> Um, for EU citizens, as we mentioned before, it's tuition free. So EU and EEES, that's Norway and Switzerland, that's also uh, tuition free for them. And Sweden is, is one of the safest countries uh, in the world. Some of the students come from places in the world that are not as safe and that's something they do appreciate. I don't know how you feel about it. Yeah, it is, it is uh, quite nice. <laughs> to sort of, yeah, different different lifestyle almost. You sort of adapt to to be able to do different things and it sort of opens up a lot of possibilities that won't necessarily. Yeah. 
So you walk and you bike everywhere at yeah, night. You, you don't great, yeah. you don't need to uh, feel be anymore. yeah feel threatened or be, or be afraid of being yeah. alone out. So so that's something that me as a natural born Swede take for granted. But I've I've learned through uh, many of the students that we uh, we interact with that this is a this is a big thing for them. And here we do have some useful links for details about the different programs. You have the specific program sites for the innate immunity and health and disease, the nutritional molecular medicine and bioinformatics that, that you attend, and also the cardiovascular medicine program. The application link is there, university admissions. Below that, we have the specific application links for the specific programs. Uh, general information about the university, you have a link about that, and then there's, uh, there's a great website called Study in Sweden, you have the link there that provides a lot of, lot of literally everything. Yeah, right? <laughs> everything you want to know is pretty much on that website, so it's a good place to, to look into if, yeah. you, if you're wondering anything. And it's constantly updated. Yeah. So, yeah. And now we do have some time to answer uh, questions. So I'm not sure if we have, uh, oh yeah, so we have a question and it is from, it's Ayata. Uh, I have a bachelor's degree in food science and nutrition. Can I apply for this program? You absolutely most certainly can if you, uh, if you meet the general requirements of having a bachelor or more than 90 uh, credits. Yeah in in the topic and it sounds without having knowledge about the details about your program it's uh, actually my bachelor program it's actually <laughs> your bachelor oh and i applied and i'm here so <laughs> yeah there so you go you, you can <laughs> oh so your program is called exactly that uh yeah food science and nutrition <laughs> i also did a few extra courses in genetics but I, i'm pretty sure with just the base in nutrition and the biochemistry with it we do qualify oh. Yeah. So. Excellent. So <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> uh, okay. And then we have a bachelor's degree in bioinformatics with uh, 130 plus credits. My whole degree was in English language, but it's not written in the degree. Can you? Okay. So this is a, this is a question concerning the English speaking or the English language requirements. And we also have had a few of these present in. And the, uh, for the evaluators to be able to, to evaluate in a, in a proper way that the English is up to, up to bar, there needs to be, there, there are quite strict requirements to provide uh, certificates of these and there are several international um, international tests you can do that will provide this information for the university uh, admissions so yes except from the English speaking countries like UK we mentioned Netherlands probably before possibly I'm not entirely yeah, sure and but... US we do require a proof of, of, uh, of English uh, there's a question about any limitations for age, as this person is 39 years old, there's no limitations at all. The only limitation, no, there is no limitation. <laughs> as long as you are motivated and want to learn and contribute, you are most welcome. Age is... It's a big range of, of ages yeah. in, in the program, so... Yeah, we actually have welcome. some yeah. pretty fresh graduated bachelors up, up to... to 50 almost yeah i, I think, think so yeah so it's we have some medical range. doctors that yeah, are uh, very experienced practice, yeah. um and we have a question sent in about um, the master's degree in cardiovascular medicine if it includes any clinical experience this this program is not specifically a medical program so there are no real uh practice in clinic however there are visits and there are lab work and interactions with clinic but in the courses there is no clinical work included okay and then we have one uh about without the scholarship i cannot study in sweden so if i set a blue at one priority list 
what are the chances of scholarship? Uh, the scholarship application chances are not adhered to um, to the the priority list, as as I am informed. There are uh, scholarships from uh, Swedish government, and there may be from the university. That's not set yet. But the the priority lists uh, have nothing really to do with scholarships. Was there any? Oh, another one. Uh, I'm applying for cardiovascular. Are there any specific application documents to be uploaded apart from the ones indicated at the university admissions website? Yeah, we also had this pre sent in. And you had an answer for that, right? uh, Yes. No, you only have to send in the documents asked for university admissions, but um, I think it's also said on the website, if you're still busy with your degree and you haven't gotten the official degree document, as I, it was the case for me, you have to bring with the degree and the transcripts once you officially get them from your own home university. So then just bring that along, you just show it to them so they can just confirm, and then that's it. Yeah. I think it's a generally good idea to bring hard copies of your yeah, of your probably. transcripts because so you, you never know if, yeah. if if they ask at the university you will have that so yeah. that's always a good thing. And then we have a, a research oriented question sent in what are the goals and parameters of the research and the future research opportunities? That's a big question. <laughs> Uh, the goals and parameters of the research, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that, but we, all the different uh, research environments that have this and give these uh, master's programs have, have different angles and focus. Uh, a general theme you could say is inflammation because we all work in that field, whether or not it's innate immunity, if it's if it's cardiovascular disease or nutritional gut brain and the uh, biostatistics, we have that as a common thing. And in the education, that is also a, a unifying uh, focus of, of students because yeah. you can we can always discuss that topic. Yeah. Uh, and then future research opportunities. Uh, if you talk about potential PhDs, there is no uh, there is no direct transition from a master's to a PhD uh, position because this is PhD positions are funded uh, externally. However, we are a very research heavy university and some students have stayed on after others have, have gone out in the world or other places in Sweden to pursue a research career. So uh, it's very difficult to foresee, but what, what, what I can say is that you will have the best available tools and training to become uh, to get a really good head start into becoming a researcher. And we have, can Swedish students apply only through antagoning.se or do we also apply through university admissions? Uh, Swedish, Swedish students can apply through both. And generally, when it comes to uh, to questions about uh, the uh, the admissions, we did provide some uh, email links at the end, uh, and they will answer all your questions. It's masters in medicine, and which there? Maybe. Come on. Oh, here. Yeah, we didn't show it. Now I show it. <laughs> so here we have some information, contact information. So I am program coordinator. That's my email address. And then we have a program. If you have program specific questions, please send them to Masters in Medicine. And then we will direct it towards the person that really can answer your uh, question in depth. Study advisors for everything uh, concerning life around and things like that. Contact them. Admissions office. This is a typical uh, question for the admissions office the free mover, they will have all the questions, they will have all the answers concerning the, the English tests and the, the different requirements and if your points are enough and, and things like that. So please contact, they are a central, really good uh, source of information for you. And then general questions about the uh, general programs, uh, international masters at 4.se.
so there's there's a few opportunities to uh, to contact people and we hope that you will find you will find answers to your questions and that you will uh, uh, come to us next fall so did we have any more Uh, there's a person that graduated and got a physical chemistry master's and applied for the chemistry bachelor. Is it possible to apply for the program? For these programs, uh, physical chemistry, mm, that question I cannot answer straight off the bat if you meet the uh, basic requirements for the 90, 90 points in, in biomedical, medical, it may. So please contact contact uh, the administrators that will will can look further into this to give you a detailed question because we need to see the transcripts to see if the ninety uh, if the ninety point requirement is there or ninety credit. Uh, what's the scope of jobs? And co if after completing the masters, I mean, what are the fields and in which we can work? Wouldn't it be research-based or practical? Yeah, so it can be research-based, uh, of course, PhDs uh, and academic studies. It can also be uh, practical. We have had students before that are now medical doctors uh, here in Sweden. So it's really, we try to give the best, uh, best opportunities for a broad uh, for broad uh, education and broad opportunities and we are starting to incorporate some of the companies we collaborate with research-wise into the uh, into the teaching as well so um, there are very broad opportunities it's, it's difficult to pinpoint and I don't really want to pinpoint either because it's the imagination kind of that sets the it's a good base for pretty much from my point of view of pretty much anything I've wanted to do that I've thought about doing. It's, yeah. it's a good pace for going into like di doing different companies, joining research, um, doing medicine. Um, you can, it really gives you good information for all of those areas. So I think it's very broad what you can do after this, mm -hmm. which is good. <laughs> uh, we have a question. If, uh, if you're eligible to apply for the nutritional molecular medicine and bioinformatics, if you finished a specialist degree uh, in a medical university um, it de and the degree is medical care so I assume that again uh, depending on the the content of the courses a degree in medical care would fulfill the requirements and if you have finished it by the end of this year you will need to have the transcripts ready by the date of admission and I guess that you would have that in time. And again, as you did, Hanel, if some things are not really on hard copy yet, you can bring that and, and, and use those on site. As long as you've been conver having conversations with, with the administrators and they have said that it's yeah. that's an okay route to go down. Yeah. Do we have any more questions at the bottom? Uh, what's the deadline for applying for this program? For international students, it's January 15th through universityadmissions.se. There's also links in this uh, presentation for that. Can I switch to another program after getting admissions to one program? Um, you can switch, uh, I assume. Uh, you can always you can always change program. You may not you cannot transfer, but you can stop one program and start another. But it depends. You cannot immediately transfer because the the programs are uh, are quite specific. So you need to start from scratch from the beginning in the new program you want to take. But of course you can you can change educational program. That's that's a student's prerogative. 
Average monthly expenses, living, and food. Well, I think this is one yeah. for you, Hannah. Um, you can actually look at a study in Sweden. They, I think, up update that every year to sort of give you a broad overview. Um, it's about 8,000 to 9,000 um, crowns, um, I think that they say on the website, and that is pretty accurate. Um, that is, you can completely come by, get by with, with that. So, okay. yeah. I think the rent at the university is about 3,000 crowns, and then from there, the rest. So yeah, about 8,000 to 9,000, I think. But look on study in Sweden. They also have that there. Okay. Uh, do we have any more questions? My brother lives in Sweden for eight years. He will get PR next year. I don't know what that means. Permanent residence. Oh, Sweden. permanent residence. <laughs> can I benefit from, can I? Benefit, what benefit can I get from this? uh that i do not know i don't have an answer for that uh then i guess study in sweden could have some sort of entrance contact them see if there is anything about the because that's uh, immigration uh questions yeah. and i pretty i'm sure. an educator yeah i'm pretty sure the embassy in your country will be able to also help you with that question yeah so maybe contact them as well yeah great Well, if we don't have any questions. further questions, thank you for participating today. And we hope to uh, see you in the fall. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Great.